Yeah, I mean, I, I think quantum physics is a really important area uh, of science. I mean, they say it's the um, the most verified scientific theory because every you know everything everything they've ever tried to uh, do in terms of experiments for quantum physics always comes according to these equations that were discovered in the early part of the 20th century. And I've got an interest in this area, although I am not a, you know, a physicist, um, you know, it's, it's something that I'm doing in, in an interdisciplinary area, but I do read in this and I am interested in the philosophical implications and theological implications. Now, um, with quantum physics, um, I, I'm not going to try to break it down and people can read about it, but um, we, what we have to understand for theological purposes is that although these uh, experiments and the, and, and the core equations of quantum physics are very well confirmed to the level of, you know, they're, they're considered as certain as any scientific theory is, although sometimes these things get superseded by a bigger theory that explains that and more, but there are multiple interpretations of quantum, there are of quantum physics there's or quantum mechanics there's different ways to explain what's happening and um, um there's no agreement among scientists of which of these uh, explanations or interpretations is actually correct and so you people might have heard about the many worlds theory and so on there's different um possibilities the one that i um am using the book or, or or go with in the book is uh, often is a version of what's often called the copenhagen interpretation which is the most dominant one since the 20th century um but this is basically um the, the version i i use of, of with this is uh, uh is co particularly connected with uh, niels bohr who was one of the uh, important founding figures of kind of uh, quantum mechanics but I don't, anyone who's interested just read read those chapters in the book please and and then you can sort of see more but what i want to say about theology is that because there's these different interpretations in play in, in that can be made um, theological views could could very much be influenced by which interpretation one takes, which means that they're not a strong basis for grounding uh, theological theories, basically, because there's these different possibilities of how to interpret it. It's very difficult to ground. If you take one interpretation, it would have quite different theological implications. So what I do in the book is kind of don't, base any of my core arguments on quantum mechanics i just base sometimes secondary or kind of interesting elaborations on that so what i try to do is lay out my theology without relying on quantum mechanics but then say well if we take this kind of common interpretation of quantum mechanics how would this uh affect our interpretation and then i go into those kind of points so i don't think necessarily it's a big challenge um, because of the the wide interpretive possibilities that are there, but I think it's interesting to see how it fits in with what we want to say theologically. And I try to do a kind of interesting reconciliation yeah. so in that if regard. You, if, you the, if you pick the Copenhagen uh, interpretation, the Bohr's interpretation, uh, what yeah. theological implication does that have? Okay, so um, there is a kind of what the Bohr's interpretation does is it makes this interesting um, connection between hu the human, it makes a kind of, it seems to make an integral connection between what experiments human beings choose to do, so what choices we make, what things we do in the world, and ha you know, actual uh, uh, sort of uh, quantum phenomena. You know, so what, you know, depending, you know, with these double split experiments and so on, depending on what you observe, the the the, the phenomenon seems to be different. And so what, is, so what I argue from this, and it's, and it's much, again, too much to get into in detail, but I argue that this is an interesting, this is interesting, but what it seems to do, and according to some uh, uh, theorists, obviously scientists sometimes don't like making these conclusions, but as theologians, what it's pointing to is that human being and consciousness has this kind of quite central place in reality. And that fits in with this idea, of, from my view, of it being part of God's wisdom to create human consciousness or create consciousness, uh, rational beings. Are the, you know, and and Mattery makes arguments that the, uh, uh, you know, the, the world really persists and sustains in existence because there are rational beings that, you know, that, that um, mm -hmm have these higher purposes you know god doesn't just create this kind of empty uh barren meaningless universe 
for no reason. There's a reason, and that's for the experience of these conscious entities that can come to know God and worship him and so on. So I think that, you know, obviously it's a big it's a big jump from on the one hand quantum physics and on the other hand, you know, Islamic theology. But I think the links can be made, and I try to in the book show how um this can kind of come together quite neatly. It, it certainly uh the results that they're finding, you know, if if some of the kind of very materialist viewpoints were correct you know that would give n nothing that would be, be helpful for a theological uh, uh, interpretation but actually what we do find that the, these the, there's such a central role for consciousness it seems in 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 the uh, and in in reality is really interesting uh, and i think what um uh, one scholar um, who i draw on uh, some, uh his name is Pugliese, i think um i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly he says that whatever interpretation one takes of quantum mechanics what it does is it is it makes this kind of intersubjective world that things are intimately connected and related and that decisions and choices have huge implications in 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 the universe and in what reality we see and and so this is kind of something that i think puts you know after um human beings have been sometimes in place oh we're just in the um we're just on a, a galaxy in the middle of nowhere in this vast space we're just a random accident this is the sort of narrative we sometimes get quantum mechanics mm -hmm. says um human the human mind is at the heart of even sub you know the choices made have these kind of subatomic effects in this very interesting way and that this is uh, uh, you know therefore you can draw from that interesting implications